Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya here at Telecom Exchange NYC with my good friend, Mr. Eric Ballard, Stream Data Centers. Eric, welcome back to JSA TV. Thank you, welcome. Hi, Jamie, how are you? Oh, doing so great, and I want to say thank you again for returning here to Telecom Exchange. You are with me, of course, in uh, Stream's hometown, uh, Dallas, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, a few months back, yet so much has been happening, so we yes. had to bring you back on, um, including a massive acquisition announcement of 157 acre of land and an existing, let me s make sure I get this right, 418,000 square foot facility in Phoenix, Arizona. Yep, actually a little outside Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. So we're out in the West Valley out there. And let me tell you, it, that 418,000 square foot building, it's a big building. <laughs> and uh, we're in the process of wrapping up design work to redo that. We're gonna do a lot of modifications to really take what is an existing industrial building and turn it into a data center product. And you know that's gonna roll out. We'll bring that live kind of first quarter of next year. Um, we're gonna have an on-site substation, 100% dedicated to us. We have 126 extra acres to build on and we're going to be building out there for quite a few years to come and we're going to build one heck of a campus. Eric, it is always so exciting to talk to you. Tell me about any other projects. So, you know, we, we don't have a formal announcement yet, but uh, I think that very soon we're going to have something to announce in Northern Virginia. Mm. So I think you'll see Stream coming into the Northern Virginia market and doing something up there. So. Oh, well, we love that. Uh, headquartered in Virginia ourselves, we're, we're, we're big uh, Virginia fans, and I will say a lot's been going on in Northern Virginia. It's a good place to be. There's a few data centers up there. Just a couple. Just a couple. Just a couple. And what are some of the stumbling blocks, would you say, that enterprises face as they work to migrate their resource planning solutions to the cloud? Just changing topics there for you. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there, there's so many stumbling blocks that a lot of enterprises can meet, whether it be a resource planning application or HR application or anything like that. So, you know, the, the things that we see is a lack of understanding of how that cloud environment works, um, a lot of security concerns. Security is a huge aspect of what's going on as people migrate resources to the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of conversation here at Telecom Exchange happening around security and the need for education. So tell me, how does Stream go ahead and help with these companies overcome these challenges? You know, the number one thing that we do is we try to help with customer education, making sure that our customers know that we are a resource and that we have tools and planning and resources available to them. You know, we partner with people like Megaport to bring direct cloud connectivity in. It can help with speed, reliability, security. Uh, we still believe that the direct cloud connection to tether into the existing data center is absolutely the best path to the cloud and offers companies the best security mechanisms. Yeah, I love my Megaport friends. So. Uh Great having the Stream and Megaport logos together for sure. Now, as enterprise workloads go ahead and increase and span uh, multiple clouds, how is Stream positioning to let them run in the networking software that they need and where they want to be? So, you know, I mean, first of all, we're a carrier neutral planning neutral data center. I mean, we, we believe that our customers have the rights to come into our facility and do whatever they need to do. We don't want them to, act, you know, we don't want them to be encumbered by anything that we put in place. Um, we get asked that the first question, are you carrier neutral? Are you cloud neutral? The answer is absolutely yes. We want our customers to have the flexibility to work with whoever they want, whenever they want. And, you know, whatever, whatever software it is that they need to run, we hope to be able to help them and support them and whatever those goals are. Um, you know, once again, we talk about Megaport. Megaport's very flexible and have a lot of capabilities and APIs to be able to open those up. You know, and we have other capabilities for cloud interconnection as well for our customers. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I do also love that uh, you put a lot of emphasis on that holistic approach to security. Uh, increasingly multi-cloud environments coupled with emerging tech like AI, we're talking a lot about AI here today, machine learning. How do you see automation and security in going hand in hand from the ground up in data center operations. Yeah, so you know, I will say, you know, I've, I've been in the data center world now for about a decade and networks for a couple decades before that, I think at this point, but you know, automation is absolutely the way of the future, right? We have to automate the processes because everything gets at a bigger scale. 
but and with that has to go hand in hand, has to be security. As we look at building automation systems and you know the evolution of the data center, the data center continues to grow. The, the IoT aspect, data centers have been IoT for the last 20 years. It's really an adaptation of technologies with more and more sensors and more and more aspects to that. And so we see that you know, all of the AI and automation brings more capabilities, more information to the data center providers such as ourselves to be able to offer more capabilities to our customers and be able to react to issues that might arise before they ever happen. For sure, yeah, and um, and we're we're hearing a lot about that today. Uh, we just got done actually with a humans and AI uh, roundtable where we're talking about safeguarding our networks and our data centers. Um, but um, but really, the the whole sort of takeaway was that collaboration of. Uh, machine learning and, and getting uh, the best possible uh, results fastest uh, without uh, human error, but still that human oversight. So, uh, so we're still putting uh, our best, our best, what we do best as humans uh, yeah. into play, and, and certainly stream the leader there. Yeah, we always have to have a human at the helm to make sure that they're making the smart decisions. Yeah. We can. There are a lot of data and a lot of analytics, and we use AI to process that data. But at the end of the day, it's a human making those decisions. Yes, very important. Well, always a pleasure speaking with you again. Uh, such a thought leader. We love having you on. Thank you for coming to our techs here in New York City. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.